It was either two or three, I think. So it was one of your first bites of real food. Like that, at the top. <laughs> and how many sentences are we going to need? That's exactly right. You've done your math here, haven't you? So this is a story structure. I'm sorry, what? Actually, the number of squares is the number of sentences. You got it. You're on to me. You've got my number. Each one of those is how many steps. It's like a path. When you're taking steps, <coughs> this is how many times you move your feet. How many chunks of text you're going to have. How many moves you make as a writer. So a story makes four moves and I've seen some kids trying to write stories where they wrote four pages and then what they ended up with still wasn't really a story. It was some good writing but it didn't tell a story. So I'm going to show you in four sentences how to write a story. Are we going to copy it? You're going to write your own story. You're going to copy my structure later but for right now you're going to write your own story. So everybody get your paper ready. You've got one, two, three, four. Sentences. No, not sentences yet. You've got places you're going to write sentences. So everybody ready? Think about this. Stories start off with characters doing something. So you get to decide how many characters. Who are they? What are their names? Are they boys? Are they girls? Are they young? Are they old? So for your first sentence, everybody think to yourselves, and for your first sentence, you're going to write a sentence that shows the characters were doing something. You tell what they were in the middle of doing, and that's all you're doing. Want an example? Three dogs were out chasing a cat. Okay, there would be some animal characters. Or, on Mount Olympus, Zeus had a problem. Or not have problems. Zeus was in the middle of eating lunch. Or in a classroom, the children were right in the middle of their tax test or their star test. So make characters in the middle of doing something, okay? That's your sentence. Dream it up, don't share it, keep it to yourself. Number two is In every story, something happens that's a problem. So it's time for your problem to happen. You start with suddenly or all of a sudden and then finish that sentence with a problem that came up that would stop them in their tracks. Number three, for the next sentence, Tell what the characters did to try to solve the problem that did not work. Some ways they tried to solve the problem that absolutely did not work. That's number three. Number four. This last sentence tells how did they solve that problem. Or some stories don't have them solve the problem but they figure out how to deal with having that problem how they either solved or learned to cope with that problem. So there's the, the last box in the structure, how they solve or deal with the problem. And now, once you finish these four sentences, ladies and gentlemen, you've written a story. It doesn't have a lot of detail, it doesn't have any dialogue. There's going to be a lot of detail that you could add, but this right here could be expanded to be a whole movie. So. Let's listen to each other now. Who'd like to read theirs? I'm not done. Dogs were roaming the street. Suddenly a car was coming fast. The car was about to hit the dogs. I ran and saved the dogs just in time. Awesome. Dogs were roaming the street. Suddenly a car was coming fast. The car was about to hit the dogs. I ran and saved the dogs just at the right time. Perfect. Perfect. Good. A dog was in the middle of eating his oh-so-delicious dog food when suddenly, 
a vicious cat comes was clawing and hissing at the dog. The dog tried to tried so hard to chase it away, but it didn't work. The dog was not in the mood for a big bloody fight, so he had to think and think hard until he got until he got it. He would make friends with the cat, so he did, and it worked. When his right ear went up and all you heard was dog laughter, in parentheses barking. Oh no, the dog thought to himself, another problem, but he'll have to deal with it. The end. So sad. Good one. Three space aliens were in the middle of an intergalactic war. Suddenly, they were hurled into a spaceship against their evil clones. One of the good aliens tried to reason with them, but it just created a war. Good versus evil. Finally, it was alien versus alien. The good one shot the gun and BAM! The good aliens sent the bad ones into a different dimension, but they knew they would return. We got a cliffhanger there, but it wasn't over. They were, they knew they were. Sounds awesome. awesome. Can you read us your story now? Sure. A cat was chasing slash bothering a dog. When the dog growled and snarled at it, the cat got scared. The dog tries to get rid of it, but figures out that the only way of doing it is ignoring it. Good. Tom and Jerry hated each other. One day, Jerry went into his hole. Tom tried to get him out, so Tom set a trap. Jerry got caught, so he got free. One of the pieces fell off, and in one of them, like, you know, the chainsaw, something like that, and they chased Tom. The end. All right. So thinking of a character that you knew already yes. helps you. Good. One day, Jake and Todd were in the middle of playing a volleyball game. Next, Todd hit, Todd hit the ball and it went super far away. They tried looking through binoculars. That didn't work. They tried running, but it was too far. <coughs> they couldn't do anything, so they came clean to their mom and their mom said, it, said not a problem. And they got in the car, and they searched for, for it. And finally, there was a man that had the ball. And they asked him, and he gave it back, and they got the ball back. The end. Let me tell you something. That story that where your second thing that came up, the problem, was something as simple as a ball just going too far. It seems like it's not that big a problem at first, but it can turn into such a great story, and yours did. Yours did. You could turn that into, by adding those details, and there's a man, and are they gonna get in trouble? It makes so many mental questions come up that that's really a good thing to do to a reader when you're telling a story. Make them have one question after another. Oh no, it's gonna happen. Oh no, it's gonna happen. And even with something as simple as a ball just going astray, you've created a whole lot of suspense in those four little chunks. Beautiful job. Very well done. They forgot the eggs and had already put the cake in the oven. They went next door to the neighbor's house, who was a farmer, to see if he had any eggs, but he didn't, he didn't have any, so that plan failed. They went to the grocery store, bought some eggs, and did the cake all over again. Good job. Was that at all inspired by her cake failure? <laughs> you know that what, when you listen to somebody else's piece and you think, oh, what if this happened? And the real story makes you think of what if and it makes a, a little fiction story. That's really, really good. That's the one I thought could be turned into a sitcom. Uh, you know, that's an episode about these three people trying to make a cake. And all those things they'd say to each other while they were doing that. One would be razzing the other one about being a flake, and one would be, oh, you're too type A personality, or, you know, they'd be talking to each other and having fun. Maybe listening to music, maybe dancing, doing things while making the cake, and then, ah, no eggs. Good. Who's next? Felix, Leo, Matthew, Cynthia, and and Andrea are in the middle of writing a book when suddenly Leo's pencil breaks. Leo tries to force it to sharpen with his mind. It was not successful. 
<laughs> then, <laughs> then Matthew says, look, there's a sharpener, and Leo sharpened it, and now they can finish the book. <laughs> That's hilarious! He tries to sharpen it with his mind. Would everybody just stare at this and try to sharpen it with your mind? How did you think of that? Because earlier today my pencil broke. And I didn't want to get up all the way to sharpen my pencil. And you didn't want to get up, so you were thinking, I wish I could sharpen it with my pencil. What if you could just focus your mind and sharpen your pencil that way? Good. Way to use your imagination. Good job. Cops are chasing bank robbers. Suddenly the robbers stopped and started shooting at the cops. They st the cops started to shoot back. The cops, blinded, the cops blinded the robbers with smoke and captured them. There's a three hour film and four short sentences. I knew it was going to be concise. Good job, Matthew. That was well done. And you know what? That's like a whole genre that fits exactly that description. Three hours. Can you watch TV? There are, you know, several shows that are ongoing all the time that you could turn on that have exactly that plot. And how you fill in your details is going to be how it becomes absolutely unique, right? Good job. I bet you're a man that knows your archetypes. Good. icons in front of you. Hold them right about belly button height and we're going to do a little exercise to get everybody warmed up for what these things mean and how they sound when we add details to our writing. Okay, you ready? What's yours? A thinking bubble. What does that mean? What you're thinking. That's right. Okay, good. And what's yours? It's a word bubble. It's what people say. Absolutely. What is yours? Information. Info, things about something, background information or facts about it. Good. Uh, eyes. What is it? What people can see. What people can see. So descriptions or what things look like, right? And what have you got? Feet. Which means what? Action. Those feet mean any action. Does it just your feet kind of action or what about fans in the room? Any kind of movement, right? including what feet are doing. Okay, so students, here's what we're going to do. And you guys, I'm using your sentences. I'm going to say a sentence and you guys, if it's something that you're holding, hold up the icon. If it's a snapshot, a thought shot, an info shot, an action shot, or a, a talk shot. Are you ready? Three boys sat Jiggling their feet. Good. Up and down. Okay, good. Um, three boys sat thinking about the future. Good. It is a thought shot. Three boys spoke to each other in whispers, complaining about the food. That's right. They were speaking. They sat in the 1948 Oldsmobile parked in front of the curb. It's information about it. And they had on some shoes, they had on some shirts. Their faces look completely sweaty. Yeah, good, okay. Now, here come, those were practice sentences. Here come some of y'all's sentences. I could smell hospital smells. Action, I was chewing on a candy bar and worried. Action and? I was worried. I was worried. It was things I was thinking about that were causing me to suffer. Oh yes, I was worried is a kind of thinking, isn't it? Um, before I knew it, before I knew anything that happened, before I knew a thought in my head, I, before I knew something in my head, <laughs> my baby brother was born. Woo! Good. Um, I heard trees moving and leaves falling. I could see the trees changing and blowing in the wind right in front of me. Good. I was nervous. I was nervous. I yawned. I felt sleepy inside. I was thinking I should have a nap. Thank you. <laughs> My dad's jaw dropped. It was so low an airplane could fit inside of it. 
That's a thought. Good. Everything stopped for a moment. Good. Okay, let's stop. Do you guys see, does everybody see how every single sentence is one kind of text or another? It's one kind of thing or another. So now your job is to add details like these to the kernel essays that you wrote when last we were together. Okay? We're going to now look at your kernel essays that you wrote to remember what they were like. And then we're going to add what all you were thinking, what all people were saying, what information was up there about, anything in that whole place. What could you see and what action was going on? We're going to add those to your kernel essays. You wrote some really wonderful um, kernel essays before that were about a memory. Remember that? And so today what we're going to do is add some details. These are perfect right now. They have a beginning, a middle, an end. They have a main point. They don't wander around. You stick to your subject. And they have what they call sentence to sentence progression where one sentence leads right to the next sentence. So these are really high quality writing, but they're missing the details. That's why they're so short. So what details can we put in? Well, the things that we were just practicing. All of these, thought shots, snapshots, <laughs> um, all those icons, we're going to add to those memories. And it's going to be easy and you can do it in any order you want to. We're going to use flipbooks. Are you ready to see how? Are you ready? These are flip books. Everybody, you have a flip book. Make sure your name is between the two staples. Let's do that first. Why don't you all hold them up? Let's see that you put your names between the staples. Oh, they look good. Good ones. Okay. And how many flips are there? Five. There sure are. So lay it down and put your finger on the bottom left hand corner. Underneath your finger, you know what you're going to write? Five. That's right. Write a five. Then move up and write a four. Bump up a color and write a three. Bump up a color, two, and then a one above that. The top flap isn't going to have a number. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Good. Everybody check your neighbor's numbers. Make sure they did it correctly. Awesome. Now then. On the very top flap, I want you to write down what the subject is that you were writing about. Was it the day your brother was born? Was it the day you ate your first pizza? What was the day, the, the moment you were writing about? Go ahead and put your subject right here. The next thing we're going to do is tell me how many sentences do you have here? Five. And where do they go? Where should number one go? Number one goes on the first flap. By number one, right? And where is number two going to go? By the second flap. By that number, what does that number say? Two. Yes, you're just going to fill out this sentence on those numbers, right? Piece of cake. Let's everybody do that right now, okay? Let's write your sentences on the flip book. Ladies and gentlemen, now what you have done is Check it out. You've written your topic here. You've written your kernel essay sentences here. And you've made a plan for what all icons you're going to want to make sure and put on there. Correct? Mm -hmm. So you're going to lift a flap and use all this space. Don't do it now. Just watch. You're going to use all this space and no more space to tell about that sentence. You're going to tell what you were thinking. You're going to tell what anybody was saying, what things smelled like, what they sounded like, right at the moment of that. Okay? You can add as much as you want, but it's got to fit on here. Okay? Let's give that a shot now. You're going to lift up your flaps and write some sentences under there, and then we're going to share and see what you added. Okay? Okay. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. Do you know what to do? Okay, good. If you get stuck, We've got some revision stations. We can ask you questions about that icon. We can ask you questions like the snapshot station or the thought shot station. Sound familiar? Okay, good. Let's go. 
Gentlemen, ladies, you may lift your flap and begin writing. first place in the science fair that was yours and there are five sentences so what you're going to do next is copy those sentences number one what does that say I was outside riding my bike that's sentence number one you're going to write it next to the number one I was outside riding my bike right there put a period and stop and go to two just copy these onto that okay great I had a new baby brother that I would treasure that day. What smells can you notice? Hmm. I noticed hospital smells. What were your fingers touching? Hmm. Well, while my mom was in the emergency room, my dad went to the vending machine and bought me a candy bar. What noise did you expect to hear? I didn't hear any noises. Just, just that, just footsteps. Okay. What did the air smell like? The air smells a little, a little out of the ordinary. Was there any music in the back? background? Not at all. Did the feel of anything remind you of something? Well, it was really cold in the hospital. So what did that remind you of? It reminded me of the night, yeah, when I was in my little race car bed, I turned on the fan and I closed the door with a, with a lot of night lights. What perfumes or colognes or soap smells can you recognize? 
I couldn't I couldn't recognize all of them. What can you just barely hear? Okay. I couldn't barely hear anything. Just me munching on it on the candy bar. What were you feeling? I was feel I was feeling a small breeze. What did your breathing sound like? I the breathing was blocked by my munching on the candy bar. What were you not expecting to hear? I wasn't expecting to hear that actually that my mom was actually gonna have was actually gonna have a baby. Was there anything running through your mind? Yes, there was. I was worried, worried that my mom would would not make it while while giving birth to my little brother. Who's willing to read their story or just their one one page? Okay. So would you read us the sentence before the first the sentence before you added any details? I opened the test. Okay. Now with details. As the test hit my desk, all my friends were drinking their orange juice. I thought to myself, how are they acting so calm? If we didn't pass the test, we wouldn't go to the next grade. Good job. Who else would like to read? Me. Okay. Would you read us the sentence that you, um, the, the sentence the way it was before any details first? Uh-huh. I had a new baby brother that, that I would treasure that day. One more time. I had a new baby brother that I would treasure that day. Ah. Okay, now with some details. Two days after my third birthday, I could smell hospital smells. My mom was having a baby. I, f I was nervous. I was gnawing on a candy bar and worried. Before I knew it, I had a baby brother. Awesome. Oh, nicely done. Okay, can we get one of the girls to read? Who will read? Okay. <laughs> what was your sentence before? Um, I finished my test and was so happy. Good. This, which test are you writing about? Uh, the tax test. The tax test. Was this when you were a fourth grader or a, a seventh? A third grader. A third grader? Little child. Okay, which icons did you add to it? Um, I added the thinking. The thought bubble, yes. thinking. The and action, the action. feet. The eye, the seeing. Some things you could see. And smell. And smell. Okay, let's hear. The room was freezing. It smelled like peppermint and we were all wearing green. My teacher, Ms. Hinojosa, said that being cold, the color green, and the smell of peppermint would help us. I don't know how, but I trusted her. I was on question number 45 on my math tax. My fingers were still shaking slightly. I made sure to bubble in the answers very carefully. So many thoughts were going through my head, such as, is what I'm bubbling right or wrong? What if this really isn't a number two pencil? What if I, it isn't and I get all the questions wrong? When I finished bubbling, I reached, I reached, I rechecked it about four or five times just to be sure. And I raised my hand, gave my test to my teacher. She smiled at me and told me not to worry. Uh, that didn't really work because I was still very worried, but I was happy that I finished my test. That was so good. You know what those details did to me? And yours did too, and yours did too. When you give those details, it gives the reader a chance to feel like they were you for a little while. With and everything that you read taught, made us feel like we were in your shoes having that experience. Wondering, and what if it's not a number two pencil? All those images you gave us go right in our heads and make us feel the same feelings you had. Munching the candy bar, wondering how does being cold and green make us do better on the test? That's funny. Good job. Do you think you might want to use these icons in your writing later on this year? Do you see how using them on every single step is going to make it so rich with details? Your readers are going to go. I can imagine that whole experience. I know what it was like being you.
Good. Back to work then. You're going to add some more to each one of the flaps and when you're finished, we're going to take this to line paper and every time you lift a flap to write what's on that part, when you lift the next flap, you're going to indent so that you're going to have different paragraphs as you go and your piece of writing will be all finished already. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Good. Are you going to want to make a kernel essay before you um, start writing next time you have a writing test? If you take the time and just write where I was, what happened first, what happened next, what happened last, what I thought, then you'll know exactly what to do and you'll be mentally picturing these icons and weaving in those details and you'll be good to go. Good job. like writing but now since I came here I like writing more well I kind of didn't like it writing and now it and now I like writing I like about using the expressions uh, when you're writing writing didn't really get my attention at first since I didn't know how to express myself uh, when it came up to writing it I know how to express what I'm thinking by writing it at paper I felt nervous because it was hard for me to think with very little vocabulary words in my head and now this has raised my vocabulary a little bit higher to where I know more words and I know how to spell better and put more details and write better. I didn't really ever like doing writing. It seemed to take too much time. I learned a lot of new things that I can use to help me write faster and better. I wasn't very interested in writing and I didn't really try my best in writing because I thought it was too much work. So now that Miss Burnaby taught me how how to go through these shortcuts and icons, now I I can see clearly that writing it's a very cool um, subject. Before I went to Miss Burnaby, I didn't really know how to spell anything, and now I know how to spell almost everything I can. I hated writing. I never really liked writing at all. Now I want to write a novel maybe and just keep writing and never stop. I didn't like it. I was like dreading going to seventh grade because of the writing time, the writing star. Now I'm excited about going to seventh grade and doing the writing star test to use all the stuff I've learned.